Hello YouTube, this is the rod out of the rear strut. I took some pictures so you kind of get an idea. There's a tube goes over here, okay, and that's your seal. And this has like a valve in it. What that does, there's there's fluid in here, and I have a drain pan. Uh, I made a hole, let the fluid drain out. It's kind of sketchy doing that. You know, flammable items. And I'm not going to show I got the spring off. Uh, that's like a valve. That regulates when you push down on the shock how much fluid can go squirting by it. You know, it's slowly, so it slows down the axle the wheel coming up. Plus, it's under pressure. Really not under pressure. Uh, they're not a, a really a factory's not really a gas strut because believe me, I made the hole. It wasn't no big. Psh, it was just like maybe a little bit. That's all you heard. Well, they're so old. Uh, that's why I was brave enough to do that. But I did break a cutter blade. I was cutting the nut off. Good thing I wear goggles and long sleeve sweatshirt. Because I shattered a blade. It had a chip on it. I do not use it. I was cutting down at an angle to get the nut off the top. That's after it was disassembled. The you know, spring was gone and everything. But I did still come out with a nice usable washer. But beware of that stuff. Because that blade shattered. I mean the pieces flew, flew off that disc. It was... A small one. I had. I used the smallest disc I had that could fit in there. Not a big, full new disc. So uh, when it shattered, it didn't have as many parts to go shatter. Because I knew I was going to be cramming it down in. It's kind of dished out like this, you know. So you just get your cutter blade down there on the nut, and it snagged just enough to shatter it. So there's a safety thing there today. You know, be careful doing that stuff. I wear, like I said, I should have a full face shield, but. There you go. Here's that thing spot well that I showed you on the other one that left the marks. We're going to go out and take that off. We're going to cut this off. We're going to make a long chisel. So that means we're probably going to chop this off right as it tapers down. So we got some mashing room when we hit on it over the years. You know, it's, it's tapered in. We don't want the mushroom. I'd rather hit a little smaller diameter. So we'll... Go do all that, and we'll come back and show it to you again. This is about 13 inches of usable length. About 12 millimeter diameter rod. So I'd definitely be saving the other one in case I want a little rod. Uh, like the other rear one, I have it saved. And I don't care if it's laying out in the rain. You know, it's all sealed up inside. So let's talk. More work on this. Okay, we cut a slit in this, and we're peeling it off with a chisel. My favorite chisel. I even repainted it the other day because I ruined it again putting vice grips on it on the car, which I bought that tool to hold the chisel and it didn't work. I think you get the idea. Cut a slit. There will be a little bit of mark on there, but you can see down there where it was spot welded on there. Okay, let's get to work. Get this off here. Okay, I lost the piece. It fell down by the bit. I think you get the idea. I just went around and just kept chiseling it and peeling it off the spot weld. I can kind of buff that up. So it won't look so bad. It, remember, it's going to be a tool. This, like I said, this is going to be the chisel end. So I'm going out to cut and start shaping it. We're going to use the grinder here for a little bit of work. We'll do the main shaping with the grinder. So here we go. Okay, this is just four and a half inch grinder, and I set the chair. I did the main part in the vise, and then did some fine tuning setting in the chair. You're running different ways. I mean, you can bring your stone in this way or the other way. I find it easier when you're fine tuning to run it up this way. So you, you know how far you're going. That's about one inch back. We want a little more taper than that. We want this to fit down in somewhere if it's hard to get in there. So. It's going to be a little bit of grinder and belt sander and uh, see what we can do because if we just get so nervous with that four and a half inch grinder, we're going to get carried away because it is hard to, you got to hold it in your hand, then it starts getting warm even the glove on, so we're dunking it in the water. And it is kind of hard on me to hold that grinder over and over and set it in a chair and you're propped on it, you know, it's, it's a lot easier on a belt sander and a grind bench grinder to me, so. Back to work. Let's see what we can do. A little bit more tapering to make that a little longer. Mary, not put no edge on it yet. That comes later. And this will all be buffed out. We'll snap a photo of this progress and on to some more grinding. 
Okay, we're going to try to get you up closer and show you how we did this at the belt sander. Okay, so we got it marked around here where it's even. What we did is we got it up here and we didn't go past that mark. Which we kept going back and forth. But the very last, what we started doing, we started about right here and kind of brought it out. Kind of as the belt was running. So it kind of makes it. Let me get let me get back here again. Boy, what a zoom feature. Okay. So what it kind of does is makes it kind of drop downhill a little faster. So it's tapered, but it's tapered a little more down in here. You really can't tell it, but I can feel it. If it comes along, it goes in and goes bloop. You know, otherwise you're grinding all day long and all day long to get that sharp. You know, and it doesn't really matter. It's tapered enough. This will be used to getting in really tight places. I've thought about a screwdriver handle, you know, with the bolt thing. I don't think so. I think we'll keep this nice and smooth. But now to get rid of these with a sanding pad and go do some work and buffing on it and make it look nice. So the final edge will be the last thing, the sharp edge. But that's not bad with a belt sander. We'll take a couple photos of that. Okay, we're all shaped and sharpened and buffed it with our abrasive wheels to try to blend that in. Now we're going to do the edge, heat it up, quench it, see if we make the still harder. Focus. We know there's an edge in there. I'll take a picture of it. Well, if we can focus, I think it's hard enough. Hear that? Here's down the bottom. That was never, that was touched with the grainer and that got hot. This is not really removing anything at all, so. Focus. You know what I mean. I think it's hard enough. We'll find out when chisel the bolt someday. And yes, I use map guys. I'm not being sarcastic. Every asked me. Man, my throat's rough. I need a drink. You've all seen this torture. I got a video on it. Will that thing focus on here or not? It's just the light. Okay, one final look before we go. I rebuffed it so it's nice and clean. The file did not even touch that at all when I hardened it. You don't want stuff too hard and have it chip off and break, but we'll find out when we go to use it. So, don't get down in somewhere where it's hard to reach. I could use this long one when I did the rivets on that ball joint on both sides on the car. There you go. Leave me plenty of pictures. I'm sure I took plenty of them. So, thanks for watching.